few weeks ago I posted a video asking for help trying to fix this device. It's a ZIP30 teletype. Um, essentially the tape reader won't run in continuous mode, it will read a single character then stop. When I received this unit it was in a terrible state, so it needed a, a lot of repairs and as part of that process I reverse engineered the firmware. Now I haven't received any assistance regarding sorting out the problem with the tape reader but I have received a couple of requests to go over how I reverse engineered the firmware. So in the next few videos I will be detailing how I went about that. Uh, it is of course a fairly lengthy process so I will have to skip through some of that but if I miss something or if there's a particular part of the process that you want me to cover then uh, drop me a comment and I'll be sure to include that in a future video. In this first video what we'll look at is how I got from um, the ROMs that are in the machine to the initial state of documentation that I could then use to start reverse engineering the firmware. Essentially what I was doing is using the logic analyzer uh, almost like an ICE system. Uh, and of course I wasn't running the firmware from the analyzer but I'll go over in more detail exactly how I was using the analyzer to step through the code and try to resolve what the various problems were. It did allow me to fix 99% of the hardware faults. Uh, as I say, I'm still left with the problem with the reader. But we'll start with the process at the ROMs. So I'll get this unit opened up. I'll show you what's inside and where the ROMs are. And then we'll look at the information that's in the ROMs and then how to initially do the um, decompiling of that into a list file. Okay, this is what's inside the front of the unit. Um, we've got the main processor board on this side. At the top here we've got the serial interface card and at the bottom we have the ROM card. It has enough slots for seven ROMs, although only four were fitted when I received it. And this particular ROM is an option ROM, it just gives another character set. But I'll go through how um, I interpreted all this later on. Also, I'll go over what each of these devices does and how it could be interrogated using the analyzer. Uh, the way the machine's configured is, is a, a power supply on the right. Um, there's a, a regulator and a stepper driver board right at the back and that had a lot of faults on it. When I took it out it sounded like popcorn when I bent it which is a clear indication there's a lot of dry joints. So eventually got all that working. Tape reader and punch on the left. Um, this machine was not built for servicing the ribbon cables go through various boards on their way to the main processor so it's very difficult trying to get anything out of this. It's quite easy getting the boards at the front out of course but everything else means a uh, fairly major strip down of the machine and it's very difficult to actually power any, in any individual part up when the machine is dismantled. So down here we have the ROMs. Uh, I won't go over the hardware faults that I found other than to say that it was just changing some chips, dry joints, um, a few mechanical breakages, that sort of thing. But most of what I spent my time doing was reverse engineering the firmware so that I could resolve the other issues, or at least most of them. So the first thing I did was to remove the ROMs and uh, read them. Uh, in itself not an easy task because these are two 708 ROMs and if anyone's familiar with them they'll know they are three supply ROMs. So they have um, plus 5, minus 5 and plus 12 volts. Very few readers will actually read them. But it's always the first thing I do when I get a machine like this is I read the ROMs just in case I damage one because obviously the firmware is going to be almost impossible to find. In fact I couldn't find any information to this machine at all other than a, a very basic user manual and that was of no help in resolving any of the, the issues that I found. So we'll go over to the PC and have a look at how I took the 
code out of the ROMs and turned it into a list file that I could then start to use to reverse engineer the firmware. So once I'd removed the ROMs I could read them and I then ended up with four binary files, one from each ROM. If you take a look inside you can see it's just the typical binary information and it's not a lot of good in this format for trying to reverse engineer the firmware. So I would need to pass it through a decompiler or reverse compiler. However, before I can do that, I need to know what the base starting address is for the firmware. And the reason I need that is because when the processor carries out a jump instruction, most of the jumps are relative jumps. So in other words, it will just be adding a value to the current address that is in the processor and that will give the destination address that it wants to jump to. In order for that to work, it needs to know what address it's currently at. And so when the decompiler is trying to figure out the destination for address jumps, it has to know the address it's currently at. And if it started at zero, then obviously all the addresses will be offset by whatever the difference is between zero and the actual start address of the ROMs. So the first step after this was to create a ROM map. And this is what I ended up with. So for each of the ROMs, I'd get a start address. They were 1K ROMs, so I know they each take up 400 hex. And I could then end up with a proper ROM map. So I know which range of addresses each particular ROM occupies. As I said, there were four ROMs fitted in this particular machine. 303, 304, 306 and 307, which turned out to be part of the part number for each of the ROMs. However, as you can see, they're not uh, in consecutive blocks. So I couldn't just simply pass them through the um, decompiler. However, I could have decompiled each one using the base address for uh, each ROM. But that wouldn't really work properly because we need to treat this as a, a continuous block of, of ROM code. So what I ended up doing was creating dummy um, ROMs for the missing ROMs. So I ended up with a set of ROMs which included the actual ROMs that I had but also included dummy ROMs like this. So as you can see, I can actually select data in here even though it's not visible. We're looking at this in Notepad and it can't see certain values. It won't represent them as characters. But this is, this is actually 1K, 1024 bytes of a particular instruction that this particular processor interprets as being a NOP instruction. So in other words, it's 1K of NOPs. And I did that for each of the missing blocks. What we then end up with is a binary file that looks like this. So you can see the blocks of actual code. And that's interspersed with the blocks of um, the NOP instructions. I could then pass this file intact through the decompiler giving it the address of the first byte in the first ROM. And then the decompiler would be able to successfully calculate the relative jump destination addresses. And so what we'd end up with in our final list file were addresses that were correct rather than offset by either an incorrect starting address or because blocks of uh, code were missing. And then what we end up with is a, uh, a final list file that looks a little bit like this. I've actually edited this um, because of course the initial list file would have large blocks of no operation instructions in them. So the first thing I did was to just delete those. We don't need them. They're only needed so that the decompiler can do its job properly. Um, what I did from that point on was hook up the 
Zip30 to the logic analyzer and then I could start to uh, work my way through the code and figure out what each block does. I could then start to give names to the various uh, destination addresses, uh, a bit like function names. I could also give names to the variables that I identified and I made the names up of course it was really based on the function they were performing uh, and then as I started to fill in the blanks so to speak then the code becomes increasingly readable and then you can just uh, work your way through it and figure out what each block does based on uh, which particular device is being addressed and what that particular device is trying to drive on the machine. Um, so that's it for this video. In the next video we'll look at setting up the logic analyzer and getting it connected to the ZIP30 and we'll do that in such a way that we can essentially use it as a, an ICE system. Although we won't be able to single step through the code or halt the code we can do is trigger on the addresses that we now have that identify each block of code and we can then essentially view the steps of the processor as it works its way through the code and then from that point we can start to properly reverse engineer the code and figure out what each block does and then see if that particular block of code is doing what it's supposed to with the machine to see if we've got a hardware fault and then ultimately in theory we should be left with just the faults on the machine that we can then um, specifically identify which block of code is driving them. So as I say we'll do that in the next uh, video um, but that's it for this one if you want any more detail about how I created this file then drop me a comment.